Nearly 70% of parents say it's hard to talk to their kids about sex, and it may not be much easier for educators. In fact, less than half of U.S. schools are meeting the Centers for Disease Control's recommendations when it comes to sexual education. So what are teens being taught about sex in schools? Sex ed, it's the one class students typically enjoy and teachers often dread. And while giggles may overpower the content, the consequences can be serious. Most parents and educators agree that preventing teen pregnancy and STDs is crucial, but they don't always agree on how. And the type of curriculum students are being taught is literally all over the map. Some say abstinence-only education is not realistic while others say comprehensive sex ed exposes students to too much too soon. In addition, the CDC says more than half of U.S. teens aren't getting the information they need when it comes to sexual health. So, should students be learning more or less when it comes to sex? We're now joined by Scott Phelps, who runs an abstinence-only curriculum, and Dorian Salat, who teaches comprehensive sex education. Thank you both for joining us. Scott, I'm gonna start with you, because you believe an abstinence-based sexual education program benefits high school students and teenagers. Why is that? Absolutely. Well, first of all, this is a message that most students are not getting. We want to help young people understand what abstinence until marriage is, and then let them make their own choice. It not only is about avoiding pregnancy and STDs, but the emotional, the physical, the social, the psychological, all aspects of the whole person. Resisting sexual pressure helps them academically and helps them prepare well for future marriage and family. And we get great response from the kids. So We're all no over the sex, country. And, the, and you're talking about all forms of sex? Resisting all forms of sexual activity prior to marriage. Now, before, before... Wow. I would have had a tough time with that, I think. Listen to this, talking about... <laughs> talking about CDC statistics, what most people don't understand is that most high school students, according to the CDC, are not sexually active, and most high school students, according to the CDC, have never had any sexual contact of any kind. Those are CDC stats. And then, Dorian, you say abstinence-only education is not realistic. It's What's not your realistic. 95% of people have sex before we married. Most of us don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Research finds that people are generally supportive of that. To say, to take a group of high school students and say you need to not have sex of any kind until you're married. And can I tell you the average age of marriage in this country? 27 for women, 29 for men. We're not talking about asking teenagers who are having these sexually awakening feelings, which is totally developmentally appropriate for them, to wait sometimes 15 years. Travis, really bad It's not real you. world. <laughs> just, just gonna tell you out there. Well, I, look, I appreciate these two perspectives. I'm glad we're having this conversation, especially in a country where everyone acknowledges there is not good, high-quality sexual education in schools. Scott, I wanna ask you, why do you feel like there is a danger to comprehensive sexual education that allows for abstinence, safe sex, what, what's your issue with that? Well, it doesn't allow for absence. A sex education program is very different than an absence education program. So in an absence education program is going to teach the benefits of waiting until marriage. There's no sex ed program that's going to teach that. No sex education program in America will teach kids the benefits of waiting until marriage. We think that's a message that, that's missing. We don't tell kids what to do. What we do is lay out, here are the benefits of doing that. Whatever you want to do, knock yourselves out. Another name for comprehensive sex education, which is what I do, is abstinence plus. All sex educators who are working in high school are teaching that abstinence is, an, is a valid and important option, that abstinence has real benefits. We, we teach, here are specific skills that are gonna increase the odds that abstinence is gonna work for you, but then we say, for those of you who are not abstinence now, not abstinence now, and for those of you who are gonna have sex at some point in your lives, it might be in high school, it might be in college, it might be as young adult, it might be after marriage, if you're gonna have sex at some point, you need good information. What we teach high school students, how to put on a condom correctly, surprise, surprise, the condoms are much less likely to break and you have lower rates of STIs, lower rates of, of teen pregnancy. So I think that message of abstinence plus everything else is so critically important. I'm actually curious, how many people here wish they had gotten more information in high school. We're given more sex education, more information about condoms and contraception. I think that that's, most people in this country say, what I got was all right, but it could have gone so much farther. I was really left out there on my own.